Uh, it's 6.01. I'm going to call the meeting to order. Thank you all for coming for our in-person meeting of the building committee. Uh, before we start, um, I have a request from <coughs> to me, our reporting secretary, who would like us all to go around and simply introduce ourselves because her, he finds it easier to uh, identify people on Zoom. We will have our name on your Without Zoom a mask, box. and people have a name on them on Zoom. So, so without further ado, I'm going to start here with my good friend, Mr. Frum Ken, from Lancaster. Ken, Ken Frommer from Lancaster. Thank you. Amy Cohen from Bolton. Thank you. Kirk Downing, superintendent. Yep. Kim Irwin. Pat Maroney. Jennifer Dodgemont. Sarah Del Ponte Cosentino from Lancaster. <laughs> Laura <laughs> Bailey from Lancaster. Stacy Dupuy, Bolton. Leah Viverito, Austin. Joseph Jason from Lancaster. Bob Sikansky, Bolton. And when, when Miriam, why don't you introduce yourself? <coughs> and yes, my name is Miriam Williams. I'm the project executive with Skanska. And my name is uh, C. Nguyen, and I'm the senior project manager with Skanska. Okay, thank you very much. Um, next item is uh, public comment. I don't see anybody here. Oh, oh no, Mr. Freezer is over here. Sorry. Uh, Facilities uh, coordinator. Okay. Rob Freezer, director of facilities. Thank you. Um, we have public comment on the agenda. I don't see anybody here for public, public comments. Anybody have any public comments? Seeing none, we will move on to the approval of meeting minutes. Um, if there's no objection, I would like to uh, dispense with the meeting minutes and hold those over till our next meeting. I got the, the, the July 19th, 2021 minutes to you very late. Some of you may not have had a chance to look at them. And there is a small issue on the September 14th, 2021 meeting minutes that I'd like to clarify. So if there's no objection, uh, we can hold off on the meeting minute approval till our next meeting in October. Seeing none, all right, we will could, go. Could I just make a, an observation on the September 14th minutes? Yeah, yes. I noticed I made a mistake. I wrote Bob instead of Mr. Sikansky. No, no, that wasn't it. Okay. <laughs> I, have to fi I already fixed that on my Google Doc. All right, I, I didn't catch that one or it didn't register, but in the first item, the move to agenda number five, it says that the motion was made, but it doesn't say by who. Um, that was Mr. Rubenstein. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Rubenstein. I'll like that. Thank you. And I think, uh, yeah, Jen found some other uh, typos. And, uh, mm -hmm. um, well, I was late. So I there's listen. only one O involved. No. I'm sorry? There's only <laughs> one O involved. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. And, and, <laughs> And by, the, and by the way, since we're dispensing with, with the minutes approval, I'll take 30 seconds to give you my little dissertation on minutes. So, so just so you know, it's not inappropriate when we approve minutes to seek amendments to the minutes if there's a mistake. If you find something in there that you want corrected, you can move to have those corrected. It is with the approval of the entire district committee. Excuse me, I keep saying district committee. I apologize. The building committee. But um, it, is, um, uh, it is appropriate to amend. And once the minutes are approved, um, they um, they can be uh, amended even further at a later date, so they're kind of malleable. All right. So without further ado, we are here. Can I just ask who's arriving? Oh, certainly. Sorry, Dave Hartnagel, Hi, Dave. still representing. Thank you. Welcome, Attorney Hartnagel. Thank you. Okay. Um, so the first item on our agenda on a new business is the introduction of our project team from Skanska. So uh, at this point, I'd like to turn it over to Ms. Williams and to introduce yourself and her uh, colleague and to tell us a little bit about what you hopefully will be doing for our esteemed district. Okay, terrific. So um, we did put together a PowerPoint presentation that um, if, if this is an appropriate time that we could put on the screen. Yeah, absolutely. And it would give you an overview of the process and um, what, what we hope to accomplish here. Thank you. Thank you. So. So while they're getting set up there, I, I have actually a couple of handouts. I, I wanted to be mindful that we're speaking to both the school building committee and some folks from the communications committee, and so we tailored it towards both so that um, what, what we're dispersing in terms of information tonight is going to be an example of what you'll see in the meetings that we have. And so uh, going forward, I mean, the next step will be to get the design team on board. Um, once the design team is on board, we would start the process for a feasibility study and that the information that's developed with the input 
from the community, from the appropriate people, we would end up um, having that information available to be communicated out to the community. We would um, also uh, be able to post information. So I'm going to wait until she gets this up. posted on the website for the high school building project? Yes, absolutely. No, Skanska has been very good about providing all of the um, file point and brochure information okay. they provide. So yes, uh, uh, Miriam did provide the um, OPM uh, slide presentation, and I'm sure that she will be happy to provide this as well. Okay. So um, what we tried to do here, and uh, spent a lot of time, and you'll probably see this same presentation well, as we bring the designer on board so that there'll be more information. We'll, we'll just start from, from the top. So we're going to talk about the MSBA process and, and next steps. And so um, I don't think you can have this process without having community engagement and outreach. And um, we know that the, we recognize the significance of this program, that this really is about building a future for Lancaster Boat and Stowe. And um, see if you could go on to the next slide. So higher level, where we are in the process, Michelle is a partner with the Mass School Building Authority. Um, for those that aren't aware of who the Mass School Building Authority is, and I'm presenting this as if we were in a public meeting, okay, for folks who are not on this committee. If you can keep that in mind, because you might say, I already know that. <laughs> so, um, so the MSBA is an independent government agency that was created in 2004, and um, and it's a program that's administered by, uh, with the assistance of the Department of Education, and so the MSBA's mission here is to partner with Massachusetts community to support design and construction of educationally appropriate, flexible, sustainable, and cost-effective public facilities. And what that means is. What we're doing here as a group is, is to come up with a 50-year solution. It's a long time. And so a 50-year solution requires flexibility because we don't know what we don't know, and the future will reveal that to us. And, and building that flexibility in the technology, et cetera, allows, us, allows the school to keep evolving as times change. Next slide, please. So prior to the feasibility study, um, the MSBA required the district um, to partner with them in developing and agreed upon design enrollment. That information looks at historical data. They look at data, they look at that Irish Boston, sorry, accent. <laughs> There's an hour on everything. Um, so uh, what, what we do is we, um, you know, they, they look at the number of births and deaths and they, they look back 10 years and then they try to project 10 years in the future. And so the design enrollment for Neshoba currently is 925 students. And that number is based on an 85% utilization of the school. And so you see that you have room for growth in, in the program as uh, you, you'll see the fluctuations in terms of uh, births in the community, or the, you know, certain grades are going to keep going up and down over time. So, uh, next slide, see. Um, each district starts with a rate of 31%, which is based on income poverty levels. Um, the base reimbursement rate for the district is 49.53%. Uh, this rate gets adjusted annually through the Department of Revenue. So. If, if a community has had an increase in unemployment locally, et cetera, you, you would see that, that number go up, or, or you could see that number go down and the community was doing better. Um, so 
this number will remain the reimbursement through the feasibility study, but when we submit the final uh, schematic design and project, project budget and schedule, um, we will be given another number and that number may fluctuate. Uh, next slide, please. So in addition to the, the base reimbursement rate, um, there's also what they call discretionary uh, incentive points. And so if, for example, you had a, a model school that was accepted at, under the MSBA program, you would receive an additional 5% reimbursement. Um, newly formed regional school district, high efficiency school. So in, in looking at your school, I would anticipate um, right off the bat that you would get two points for um, a high efficiency green school uh, program. That you would get uh, up to somewhere between one and a half and two percent for best practices for routine and capital maintenance. And um, and see them at risk if that, if that was the path to go. So if you look at renovation and reuse of existing facilities, they'll provide anywhere from one to five percent reimbursement. Uh, next slide, see. So what you see here are costs that are categorically ineligible for reimbursement or payment by the Mass School Building Authority. And so you'll see that they won't pay for the cost of financing or legal fees or site acquisition um, all of this information actually comes out of 963 CMR 2.0 or 2.0, and and it essentially states that there there are some costs that are categorically ineligible, like swimming pools, mm -hmm. and then there are some costs that are eligible but become ineligible. So, for example, with an auditorium, they will support up to two thirds of uh, the student enrollment number for the capacity of the auditorium. But if you said, well, okay, we have 925, and so we're gonna ha have an auditorium for 308 students, and then you say, no, but we think, you know, that's a third. We think we're going to um, do it for 75% of the students when we want full capacity. Well, they would reimburse for the capacity and the square footage to, to accommodate what's within their design parameters, their, their space summary guidelines, but any square footage that exceeded that, they would uh, not reimburse for that, and it would be 100% cost to the district. They would also, on top of that, take reduce the funding for the OPM, reduce the funding from uh, the designer, and not like huge amounts, but they will reduce it. And, and, and then whatever the cost of commissioning those additional square foot uh, square footage of those spaces, they would take that money back as well. So you can see that what they're really trying to do is, is create equity across all the schools. They present guidelines that you know, are, are pretty good standards for saying what, what do we need uh, for spaces, but they're not perfect and every community is different. And so it will ultimately be the choice of the community, this group, if, if for some reason, because your practices are in the building are different than maybe another community, and you may opt. I know, for example, I'll use Attleboro High School. You know, they, to, you know, they wanted to, um, they couldn't exceed 750 students. Well, they have 1,725, and they said, but that means I can only get the ninth graders in here. I can't, I can't get two grades at one time. They made a decision that they would spend the extra money mm -hmm. so that at the start of school they could bring the two students in. But we were also able to look at where, where else could we build capacity in the school, whether it be through the, the, the cafeteria as an example where they could actually assemble the whole school in the cafeteria if they took all the tables and chairs out and then they just set up chairs in, in a row. So there are lots of strategies and ideas about how to make space flexible, multi-purpose, et cetera. So that would be our goal in working with the design team and, and um, really surveying and listening and understanding what, what your needs are and what you're looking to accomplish. Um, go back, see one more. I just checked in recently and the construction costs over $360 a square foot. It's the MSBA's policy is 100% ineligible. 
Now, they're not saying that you should be able to build a school for $360 a square foot. That's not the case. What they're saying is that's their level of participation, and you're going to see schools that are anywhere between you know, $450 up to $750 per square foot. And whether it's a vocational space or a specialty space, robotics, et cetera, all of those things contribute to cost. So um, it's an important conversation to have out in the community so, so folks don't think that um, what you're doing here is excessive. Uh, and looking at um, site costs over 8% of direct construction costs, well, that's really what they're saying is if we took the site out of the equation, what's the value of the building? Okay, if the building is 100 million, as an example, your site cost, um, they'll participate in reimbursement up to 8 million. But if you exceed the 8 million, the rest of that is ineligible. You almost have to really, it's an amazing spreadsheet to see how how they have these checks and balances uh, for really telling you what's eligible and what's ineligible. So if your rate is 49%, that's your reimbursement rate, but eligible costs. But then there's ineligible costs in the project. Your effective rate, sort of like taxes, your effective rate, okay, might end up being 35% just to give you some context. Now these are just rough skip, you know, order of magnitude rules of thumb uh, that I'm trying to offer here, but I think what's really important that when we talk about the communications committee, I'm not sure how large your group is, but everyone on the school building committee, on the school committee, uh, folks that are, you know, like you have folks who were involved with the project, um, it's gonna be important for everyone to understand so that that we're telling a consistent story about where we are and what we're doing. So um, it says modular units. So for example, if you had temporary modular classrooms, you would not um, get reimbursement because it's not part of the permit building program. Uh, so, so sometimes people uh, come up with different ideas about how to address that. So in one community, uh, Winthrop Middle High School, C and I worked on it together, what they did is a utilization study. Instead of putting modulars in, they assessed where, where they were with the four schools in the community, and they actually reconfigured the, get, the, the grades temporarily, and they didn't have any money going into uh, temporary classrooms. That saved them about $4 million in 2012 dollars. <laughs> so, <laughs> so where I'm going with this is that there's lots of ways that we can be creative and think about, and, and then sometimes it might be that, no, we really do need, because of the practices that we have with our educational program, need to have those modular classrooms. So the idea is, is that whether this is new construction, uh, renovation or renovation addition, we need to be totally transparent in, in terms of being invisible to the school. So number one goal is to keep the school fully operational. Whatever the, the preferred solution is here, we keep you folks fully operational. It's, it's not about construction, it's about education. Mm -hmm. and, and we come up with strategies uh, and plans around that. But that requires input from the school administration and, and working towards coming up with what we think is the best plan. I'm not gonna read bullet by bullet because I think that's kind of an awful way to present, but just wanted to give you a sampling, and one thing we could do, see, is send them 963 CMR, and it's the, it's the grant program. I'll write it down so I don't forget. It's the grant program, and talks about all of these things in more depth. Next slide, please. So, the MSBA establishes process and standards. It's actually a very linear, prescriptive process. And uh, it's, it's a great roadmap. I mean, I'm impressed with what they've done here. That you have the eight modules, and, and they tell you, this is, this is our expectation. Here's the roadmap. And you know, module two, you know, forming a team, hire, you know, hire an OPM, hire a designer. And module three, the start of the feasibility study. What's, what's great about that is, we have our contracts, the, the, the oldest project manager as well as the designer. 
that these module, modules are a wonderful checklist of stating these are the standards, this is the expectation in terms of deliverables. And, um, and, and it's, a, it's a proven process and it works. Um, next slide, please. So the, um, the first step after the design team is on board will be to uh, put together visioning sessions. We'll have an educational uh, planner who will be involved with the process. That person it usually goes three, sometimes four days. You have individuals, whether it's you know, police, fire, teachers, students, um, getting that kind of feedback from the community, you're getting, you're getting buy-in, you're getting an understanding. Again, I'm repeating myself, what are the practices in the building? What works, what doesn't work? What, what, what would you, you know, what do you envision for the future? And, and that, you know, three to four day session, at the end of that session, is all that information, you're, you're guided by a professional, all, all of that information is then uh, information that can be used to update the educational plan. I love your educational plan, by the way. I think it's, I think it's great. And um, to have somebody who is a professional educational planner who helps design schools and really, you know, you think outside the box, where, where is the world going? This is going to be um, important to be able to have that kind of collaboration that takes place. And so even though you have a draft educational plan the, in module three, the, it's very prescriptive what they'd like to see in your educational plan. I haven't yet um, reviewed it to line by line to see if you've met the criteria uh, of what the Mass School Building Authority is looking for. Uh, but certainly there's opportunity to edit this. And um, for anyone who may or may not have experience in writing uh, an educational plan, because sometimes we go to communities and they don't exist. And um, so I always say, surround yourself with, with people that know what they're doing. So whether it's the, 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 you know, the, uh, the lead of the science department, they can write that piece. If it's special education, you have somebody else who can work on that piece. And, it, and it's a great way to pull a very powerful plan together about how you're going to move in the future. The reason why this is so important is that your educational plan is really the basis of design. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the roadmap. This is what we're looking to accomplish. And this is what the Mass School Building Authority is going to measure. And, and so, at, at the end, when, when the educational plan is complete, and it's sent off to the Department of Education and they give it a blessing and they say, yes, we think you have a solid plan. What you'll, what you'll see is that the design team is accountable and we're accountable to make sure they're doing this. The design team is accountable for making sure that the design supports every bit of your educational plan. And so when you look at all of the options, whether it's renovation, new construction, et cetera, the plan's gonna be some options are going to support the plan better than other options. And so the whole idea is, what is the plan that best supports the educational plan, and then is the most cost-effective solution? So that, that's where we're going, and I'm probably stealing the architect's thunder, but there'll be plenty <laughs> of time for them to, to get it back and do something there. Um, so building the project team, you'll see that you, you have gone through a lot already, <laughs> done a lot of work, and, um, and there's more to be done. And so here's the part where we start not only talking about the building project, but, but talking about um, creating champions in the community, you have three communities. I kind of think of it as a campaign. <coughs> okay, so you can identify a person in each community, but then it's sort of like having neighborhoods and precincts. Who are those champions gonna be? Who cares about what's happening at the school and is willing to work for it? And, and so um, there's, there's a process, and I won't get into it tonight, but it, it, at some point we'll, we'll get the Office of Campaign and Finance out there to tell you how, how to not get in trouble, what you can do, what you can't do, um, how you can raise money, where you can raise it or not, you know, whether it's school property or not. And uh, that there's a process for this. And when in doubt, make a phone call. So I don't pretend to know more than they do. 
I just know not to get in trouble, and I invite them on every project I'm on to, to present to the group and allow the community to ask the questions that they have. So, um, any questions before I keep going? Okay. I only have about 12. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's that's okay. Okay. Yeah, you yeah, better wait till the end of this yeah. thing. Yeah. 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 I'm kind of like not being nervous anymore, but I still have to breathe. <laughs> so, um, building the project team. Uh, this is the designer selection timeline. It's not 100% accurate because we have to go through our process here. But I needed to give you something to, to look at and understand that the stage we're at right now is we have a draft of the designer uh, request for services. And that tonight we're at the school building committee meeting and we um, should talk about what the process is and that we need to select three members, um, one from the school building committee, uh, the superintendent or their designee, and the third one would be the CEO of the community or the equivalent. So um, given that you have three towns, uh, I'm not sure whether that would be Don Lowe or, or how that would operate, but, but the school is in this town, so that's something that um, we would need to, to confirm and we have a little time to, to figure that out. So um, we'd recommend that if you had, it, had any questions to review it with your legal counsel, what we did when we put the draft together is that we took the information from the OPM's RFS, which Pat, I think you wrote it? Did mm -hmm. you write the RFS? So, so you have a template. Oh, no, I didn't write it down. That was the template from the MSBA. MSBA. Well, they have the template, but then the supplemental information, the statement of interest, uh, the specific issues, the deficiencies in the school, et cetera. Right. The fact that you have a, a gas main and you have a, mm -hmm. you know, a, a well next to an oil tank on the, in, in the oil <laughs> room. Those, all, all that information and the makes bodies. it, yeah, <laughs> and the bodies and all that information, um, we use the, um, we use the OPM's RFS to inform the designer's RFS. Oh, so there's nothing more to add there other than that I would ask permission that we share with the designers, um, let them be creative here, your educational plan. It's a great education, which also informed the OPM RFS. Some of it was, yeah. was put in there. And I, I think that, um, that that process of allowing people to really, you know, they're going to look at it a little bit different than how the OPM might look at it, and let's see what it triggers for them. And, and I think it's it's a good move. To, I would recommend doing that. So um, I believe with a couple of minor edits to be done to correct the dates and any uh, typos or misspellings, that um, ideally I would love to submit the RFS as soon as tomorrow, but if we can't do it tomorrow, certainly no later than uh, September 28th. And um, and then that would give the, the Mass School Building Authority an opportunity that they can take up to 10 days. I do have a call into their project manager, Christina Ford, to, to see if uh, I can squeak a few days out of her there and uh, shorten that duration and uh, maybe target an earlier designer selection board meeting. The, um, so the response to the RFS uh, would be due on, on the timeline presented October 13th. And um, I'm sorry, the uh, designer would prepare their response from October 13th through October 29th. It gives them two weeks, two days. Uh, the minimum requirement is two weeks. And frankly, these folks are doing this all the time. Um, they could do it in two days. But we follow the statute and, and the requirements there. And then we would have a, an informational meeting and site visit for the designer. Sometimes a picture is worth a thousand words. Um, give them an opportunity to get a sense of the scale and the landscape here and, and ask any questions that uh, might be uh, of concern to them. And then move on to, uh, you know, say, okay, Friday the 22nd of October, this is your last day for questions, so that 
assuming Pat and I are going to partner here, that, that we would, whatever questions we had, it, it would give us sufficient time to get responses out and not delay the schedule at all in terms of um, pushing, it, pushing it out for uh, when the proposal responses to. So what we see is um, once we get the applications, what would happen is C and I would come down and, it, you know, however many firms you have, we need to break them into the packages for the MSBA so that it's one of each design firm, that that information makes it into a reconfigured package, and, and we would get that information up to Boston to the Mass Group Building Authority. And then we would start a process of calling, checking references, we would put a matrix together where we would review all of the applications to see if um, they're fully responsive, which means we wouldn't disqualify them, and then do a comparative analysis about um, you know, whether somebody has that kind of experience with scope, scale, um, what is their capacity, uh, with their current workload. Um, there's probably you know almost 20 different criteria there that we would evaluate them on and, and look at what we would think would be most advantageous. And, and checking the references, that, that's really important to understand. Um, you ask everybody the same questions, but if somebody says, oh yeah, I, we had 10% change orders, you're like, oh, I don't think we want them, because it means you didn't have a good design, um, a good biddable set of documents, and, and we need to take all those different things into consideration because this is about mitigating risk and making an efficient use of your money and the funds available for the project. Um, I'm trying to see where I left off. So then the MSBA uh, would like up to four weeks for, for them to repackage and send out to the designer selection panel. They have a, a 13 member panel and um, we would be targeting the um, November 30th uh, designer selection panel to review the applications, and then they rank the firms. And then the next thing they would do is two weeks later, unless the numbers were like clearly hands down, this is the perfect firm for your project, and, and the points are as such that we, we don't think we need to go to interviews. But most of the time they go to, they go to interviews and it's an opportunity and because sometimes the firm you think you want to work with isn't necessarily the firm um, who you end up selecting because the interviews might give you more information and uh, even though you have three votes locally, they have 13 mm -hmm. and so um, they, I don't mean to say, could tip it any way they want. So it could go, it could go whatever direction they think because they're looking at applications all the time. And sometimes they say, let's spread the work. Okay, or let's give this firm a break. They did really well on a couple of smaller projects and we have a larger pro you know, this is a larger project that we think they could do it. So we don't, uh, we're not always aware of those conversations. And I'm, and I'm saying it because I used to, I served for six years on DCAM's designer selection panel. So I'm telling you the conversations I would hear. They're from out of state, not this one does it. You know, and it's, people have, have their reason. But the whole idea is, my recommendation would be the three members that go into this committee have a unified voice. Mm -hmm. Because if you have three different opinions, and they're going to say, well, you know, the, the district just doesn't really care who we pick. They, they're not in an agreement, and, and so they'll make that choice for you, um, so to speak. And then, then you have approval of the designer, the proposal, and the contract. And something that is an interesting thing, and, it, and I put it out here, and it doesn't have to be decided in this moment, but certainly it's sooner than later in the next week or so, that you can actually advertise the fee for the designer, okay? And what you get from advertising the fee, they don't tell you that until module, uh, a later module, but what you get from advertising the fee is that, that you don't lose that potential up to 30 days to negotiate. Now, with 
one of the projects I was on, we were going to negotiate the fee. And, and the, uh, the designer came in, ranked first. They were a great firm. I'm not going to mention names. They ranked the firm. And, um, and at the time, we're going back years, probably 10 years ago, they were looking for double the budget that they had for the feasibility study. Double. And they were saying, well, you just have to go back to the community and tell them. I'm saying, no, 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 you don't understand. Your fee is not in keeping with what we see for feasibility studies, et cetera. And so they chose to walk away. But three to four weeks went by, and then we had to start over with the next. So if there's an assessment, and there's pros and cons for this, but if there's an assessment that time is money, and, and, and we want to get started on a feasibility study as soon as possible in January, then you know, I would suggest that we come up with a number that we think is a reasonable number that's fair and equitable, and that you will have, you will have somebody's attention, okay, uh, to the point where, they, where you, know, you don't want to make the fee too low that you're not going to get uh, attract the kind of firms you want, but you don't want to make it a blank check either. So I think it's something worth discussing that if you can pick up a month in the schedule, in my mind, that's, that's a big deal because you'll see when we go further down the road and see you can go to the, the next one. Um, yeah, I was thinking more about um, if you can fast forward a little to the, uh, I'm looking for the, uh, yes, that, which nobody can read. So I, I have hard copies I can next few folks to pass around. You don't hear anything. It's maybe dumb. I gave everybody a copy of that. You did? Yes, they all have that yeah. line timeline. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. Yeah. So, I'll take that. Yeah, so great. I didn't get to print today. Because I'm not as far sighted as I used to be. <laughs> I can't see it as well. But, um, so, what this timeline shows is that it's, it's going back to what. Amy said, and I apologize, Amy, I feel like I know you because I've okay. watched all the, um, the school building committee meetings oh, leading up to, leading up, up to this, and it, and it was like, she can start community engagement. And, you know, no, it was important. Somebody else cared about something. Yeah. But that, that is what we did. And, and so, um, and, that, and that there might be concern about having this be, uh, not a speedy process, but, but that we'd be efficient with the process. And so, um, and looking at getting to years, and it starts now, you can see that the, that the feasibility study, and we fast forward and we get down to a vote, it looks like um, that the MSBA Board of Directors meeting after you submit your schematic design would put you at about August 30th, 31st, that the schedule isn't published with them, um, 2023. And, and so wh why this is important is because we look at when can we start construction. Um, if we went see them at risk, we'd be able to start construction before the completion of the design. It's a proven you know, uh, delivery methodology that, that we have utilized successfully over and over again. And it would give you an opportunity that if you could if you could get the site and the foundations and the underground utilities and the steel structure and the steel order. You know, it used to be that steel was you know, 16 to 20 weeks out. Right now, given what's happening in the world, it's a lot longer. And and so there's a lot of uncertainty there. And so what we're looking at is if we run out this schedule, which was informed by a longer Gantt chart, and I just pulled out the, the highlights here, what we're seeing is it could be the difference between nobody likes to move, and I would ask your superintendent, nobody likes to move in December. Just did it last year. You just did it last year. <laughs> and it's <laughs> awful, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was uh, a challenge, but we got it done. But if you could move over the summer, 
Yeah, no, it's, it's better. What we actually did is we, we had to move into the new building without a gymnasium because the gymnasium was over the footprint of the old building. So okay. we had to tear the old building down and build the new gymnasium in the summer and we could move in the new gym and start school. But yes, it's a bit complicated. Summer is a much better time. Big, exactly. So this isn't a perfect schedule. This is just based on the information that was available. But you can see what we're, what our thought process is and what we're working towards. The other thing is is that um, typically with designers, even though the feasibility study says 20 to 24 months, they're more interested in the 14 months a after the completion of the schematic design because of the, the sheer volume of design work that has to take place. So even though it might be, you might be one board cycle shorter on the feasibility study, they're going to want to make up those two months on, on the other side when they start module six. And so um, what I'm showing in, in yellow is that uh, where it says early bids and main bids, you can see that in going through the design process in the early reviews that we could actually start construction. You see the yellow um, milestone there uh, where it says construction two to three years in green versus in the black, where if we did design, bid, build, which is a linear process, okay, versus you're overlapping, you're still doing design, but you can start construction, you can see that you, you could pick up six or eight months and, and this would have to be evaluated um, more closely as, as we engage the design team, et cetera. So, but, but the story it tells is depending on what the, the solution is, the preferred solution, will tell you whether it's two, two and a half, three year project, and how does that line up with getting you in, in to, into the school over the summer, which, which would be maybe more ideal um, than decent. But that's all that I'm saying. So th this is what we're working towards, and whatever we can do to capture time up front in the schedule gives us greater flexibility down the road. So that kind of gives you a little insight into our thought process there. So see, now the challenge is, which slide did we leave off of? <laughs> Thank you. You're the one with all the paper signs. Yeah. Oh, there we are. Okay. Yep. Right there. Okay. So that, that's the rationale of, of uh, our thinking here. So go back one more. So, right there. So in looking at your mission statement and, and core values, um, this, is, this has to be part of the foundation of the education plan and, and to be supported in the design program. Um, your mission aligns very nicely with the Mass Pavilion of our mission and the opportunities for, for your community. Next slide, please. So the feasibility study, um, I think, is the earliest and most important part of the design process because that's where we gather everybody together. We get all the information. We understand. Um, what the existing conditions are in the building, that that, that needs to be evaluated, um, establishment of goals and objectives, and uh, fine-tuning that, that educational program. You know, because there's all this input that's coming back. And, and the best idea is it gonna bubble up, up to the top. Next slide, please. So in short, what you're looking at there is module three and module four feasibility study over 20 to 24 months. There are three major efforts, and um, the first effort being the preliminary design program. So making up the numbers, but they're based on real types of examples. So you might look at six to 12 different options, okay? You still have to look at an option for new construction, renovation, and reno addition. But you might look at an option that's in the field. You might look at whether it's an addition or a new school you might look at another site um, because you know we might start doing uh, some site investigation and discover, you know what, we can't put the school there. There's, there's all kinds of people out there. And you know, it would be more expensive 
uh, to do foundations in that setting versus another setting. So we're, we're making those evaluations. We're not going in with an agenda about what the best solution is, whether it should be new or not. We let the information inform the decision making. And um, things are not always as they appear to be. But when, when we establish um, evaluating those options, that we put pricing together against uh, compar comparable pricing against those options, and then and then we look at you know the pros and cons. Does it support the educational program or not, and how well? And so that preliminary design program, you're going to look. It, it's basically going to be like little floor plans, and sketches, it's, you know, it's capturing the educational programming, um, but you're not going to be looking at a building. Okay. The next step is once we've satisfied that first submission with the MSBA, they may or may not ask us to go to a facilities assessment subcommittee meeting. Um, we would then, with their approval, move into um, the preferred schematic report. We would go from those six to 12 options to maybe three or four. And we would say, let's focus on these. These are really the better choices here. And um, let's, let's take a deeper dive on that. And those three or four options come out of the first grouping of six to 12. Not, not introducing new ideas. It's we're, we're figuring out all the what ifs up front. And then um, after you, you complete your preferred schematic report, I'll tell you what we did in another community. We, we had a public meeting. We had all these different color stickers. And this, you know, one was for, you know, first, second, third, fourth choice. And what was, what was fascinating to me was that all but six, and there was over 100 people at the meeting, all but six of the dots landed on one option. And it was like, community consensus. Mm -hmm. At least the people that showed up and evaluated and we did the presentation and answered their questions. That community, the vote was 67% um, for the project. And so that has to do with consensus and bringing people along the entire way. Every, everything we do, our, our collective work product is going to be public information. And, and we're going to have community meetings. We're going to have the opportunity for people to ask questions and um, have a very thoughtful, um, engaging process. So then, with the preferred schematic report, we're submitting to the Mass School Building Authority. We're saying, look, here's, here's the four options we've narrowed it to, but here's our preferred option. And, and whatever that is, it is. And, um, and then they review and they either concur or they don't. It's not that they're trying to make a decision for you. They want to make sure that there was truly a thoughtful feasibility study process, that we were really looking at the issues, and, and they will know if there's gaps in the information. So there's no, no cutting corners here. And, and it's a disservice if, if the team did. So then, at, at, with the board's approval, in October 27, 2022, that's a real date, by the way, um, we're then given um, authorization to proceed into schematic design. And typically, um, uh, conceptual design might be you know, 5% of the information. Schematic might be 15% of the information. The, the Mass School Building Authority <laughs> really has us develop it to a level where it's like 25% complete and that there's enough information that, that you can put together um, a very good cost estimate, a, a, a construction schedule because there's enough information there to say, okay, how long is this going to take us to build? And um, so that there's enough information and the specifications and the drawings to put together that construction budget, and then C and I will work on the rest of it, which is you know, design fee, OPM fee, contingencies, um, furniture that we need to add to the budget because the Mass School Building Authority might provide $2,400 per student, and we might tell you we think you need $3,800 per student. And um, it, all, you know, it all depends on how much you have in the school that can be salvaged. And in some schools, there's not very much. 
that can be salvaged just because it could be 30, 40 years old, the furniture, the equipment, etc. So that's where we, you know, the devil's in the details. And at the end of schematic design, they, um, and you'll see uh, in that little schedule we handed out, that, that there's what they call a project scope and budget conference. And so that's when uh, the MSBA will, will meet with, with this group here and the OPM and the designer and have the conversation about, you know, confirming, actually it's really about confirming your understanding. Do you understand what this is in the budget? Do you understand what this is in the schedule? Do you understand this is, the, this is how much you're going to have to bond for the project? And, and, and they're very, um, they're very good at um, checking the boxes and, and making sure all the relevant information and understanding is there. And then you have, 120 days to um, up to 120 days from August 30th to uh, have your local debt exclusion vote, assuming that's the process here. And um, you could do it September 1st or you could do it December 31st. Or they don't tell you this until until the uh, until March 05 that you could actually approve it before they approve the project, mm -hmm. which is something we did in Winchester, for Winchester High School. They approved the town, voted to approve the project contingent on MSBA approval. Yeah. And that was a beautiful thing, four months right there. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine hitting the ground running September 1st mm -hmm. with your design team for the next leg of the race versus whatever that, that time might be. So it, it's, you know, it's an interesting process. It's an option um, for the discussion is needed. But trying to open this up to you about, like, there's lots of ways here to be efficient. Because if you look at escalation in the market right now, nobody really likes to talk about it, but escalation in construction, it's inflation. If you look at the cost of materials, et cetera, you know, historically inflation used to be two and a half to three and a half percent. We've had uh, some years where it, you know certain sectors have gone up, like lumber, steel, copper, et cetera. So let's say it was five percent. If if you had five percent inflation, and I'm not saying this is the value of your project, if you had five percent inflation on a construction project of a hundred million. That would be all of a sudden you're at 105 million for the project. So time is time is money and anything we can do to help have have the dollars available go into the program and not evaporate as a function of time, it, it's critical. That doesn't mean though we, we skip any steps in the process. We, we can't and we won't, um, but it's about just trying to find ways to be efficient and you know, money, money saved in escalation is money that can go into, into the building program. So, I saw this and I liked it, so I thought about it. Um, who are we? You know, when you start thinking about what can you do in terms of community outreach, well, tell them who you are and what you do and what your design is about and what it does for the community and what it does for the students. Um, you know, this, this is similar to what you would have seen on the Minivan brochures that went out to the, they were mailed out to the community. So um, there's lots of ideas, there's, there's lots of things that have been done in different communities, and I say steal with pride. You know, look at what's, where people have been successful and, and try and implement those strategies. So the communications plan is really about getting to yes. I think getting to yes means building relationships, community partnership, and leadership and communication. The more informed this group is and and the more you can have other people be informed, the the, the bigger the voice is in, in the community. So these are some of the things, you know, Winthrop had bumper stickers called Winthrop's Worth It and they did surveys to get um, feedback about uh, 
what, what people would like to, to see in the school or not. You know, so um, they were informal, you know, monkey survey. You know. um, and then, uh, you know, lower right hand corner, Attleboro was putting out a weekly newsletter that talked about the program and they were answering questions every week. You know, why a new building? Why can't, what's wrong with the one we have? And so we have a body of work and questions, frequently asked questions that can be utilized along with the, the renderings and the information that's been developed by the design team through the process. Um, there's events that take place, whether it's, it's a car wash or a pizza party, uh, fundraising for, for the campaign, but you can see that there's lots of things that, that can be done to provide information on a continual basis. Uh, we can have open houses at the school. We can have community meetings and formal books, such as we talked about with the preferred schematic report. We can have public forums, workshops, uh, project website, uh, cable access, meetings being recorded are really helpful. Um, you can do YouTube videos. And, um, and you can ask people, reach out if, if you'd like to be involved. And so, um, it's like a grassroots campaign. And who, do, who doesn't love their kids? That's what I'm saying. It's like, <laughs> this is really about, and, and so you know, that's the place I think to start. Next slide, please. So we talked about the MSBA process. Um, folks have a copy of the Skanska schedule. Next slide, please. Um, higher level, um, we're right at forming the project team. Hope to be at the feasibility study in, in January. Um, it's a very dynamic process. Um, I, I would even venture to say it's an enjoyable process. Of course, I work in the industry, so I like it. Um, and that it's pretty amazing how you go through each of these steps here and you look back, and one of these days you'll be saying, Oh my God, look at our school. God, look what we did in this short period of time six or eight years. <laughs> okay. Uh, next one. Overall project schedule, we, we talked about that. Folks have handouts. Um, if anybody wants the more boring, detailed chart, I'm happy to distribute that as well, <coughs> that inform this. But it's really just to give you a graphic representation of the milestones as we go along the way. And, and it's not only a timeline, but it, it is a reminder of the types of decisions that we can make. Whether the decisions are about an early vote, whether it's a decision about CM at risk, whether it's a decision about whatever. You know, do we want to start construction before the completion of design? So, next slide please. The communication tools that will be available, website, project email. I would recommend and I can only imagine because they're so, you know, excited in the other communities that I work in that I could give you names of somebody in another community who um, took it on as a school committee member or as a school building committee member. And, um, and if you listen to them, they'll tell you how excited they were. And I could show you work product and I... I don't want to print reams and reams of paper, but I do have some information for you. Yeah, a few that. copies that you can share with. Uh, how, how many folks are on your committee? Uh, five. Five. Yeah, five. Oh. Small. But small. But mighty. Mighty. Small. Small but mighty. Small but mighty. Small but mighty. Small but mighty. And uh, I think, is that the last one? One more slide. One more slide, just to look ahead. Yeah. So, looking ahead four months from now, We'd like to have a designer on board. That's that's where the next piece of work starts. Um, over the next four months, let's develop a communications plan, project website. Let's you know, life by the inch is a cinch. Life by the yard is hard. So we're going to start in steps. And so, first step is let's let's be satisfied with a project website. Let's create a project email list. Um, interested parties, people who want to know what's going on. Some people will want to be on that list, some people won't. Some people will 
you'll end up cultivating volunteers out of it, and some people you'll cultivate critics. And mm -hmm. just have to be prepared that that will happen, but we will, we will be with you in answering questions and, and providing solid information. So future meetings, I envision that we would talk about the website and updates and um, we would schedule a community forum. I would ask that we do that when the designer is on board um, so that we, we have some interesting renderings to look at, starting to see the formation of an actual uh, project and uh, insight and it will give us, certainly after we've gone through the visioning process, it, it won't be me talking, it will be you talking about, oh my God, this is what we learned, this is what we think we'd like to do, and, and um, that's much more powerful coming from you than coming from me. And uh, local media, as an example, uh, you can make an announcement that Skatsko was hired. You can make an announcement that your um, designer was hired. You can make an announcement that you're going to have visioning sessions if anybody in the community might be interested in participating for three to four days. Um, just just go from there. It's it's uh, just keep putting the invitation out there to participate and to, and to uh, join you in this adventure. So that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Um, but I didn't know if anybody has any questions. Mm -hmm. and I'm sure a lot of people have a ton of questions. Um, okay. Can you the lights on? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to start with the superintendent. He indicated he had some questions, so I'll start with Mr. John. Okay. Um, and Mr. Chair, I'm going to start with the most immediate question I have, and then I'll listen to others to see if it checks off some of my questions. Um, so I'll, I'll, my question is sort of long-winded to sort of educate the room as well, and some of you are aware of this. As we look at the educational plan, it's very much a current state document. And so we're in a project of um, we're in the process now of building Desired State. And so uh, we engaged the high school faculty, faculty in sort of a kickoff last Friday mm -hmm. um, around thinking about, we did watch the High Tech High video and just thought about yes. as a way to just sort of activate our scheme and thinking about possibilities, right? I actually have a meeting tomorrow morning um, here uh, with uh, some district leaders and principal around laying the schedule for site visits to other schools. Yes. So I would love a couple of recommendations for you. I can get that after the meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and then also, uh, as we're doing that, um, the site visits to other schools, we're also engaging in our profile of the Neshoba graduate process. And so when I look at the timeline and see the educational visioning and goals December of 2021, does, is that a suggestion that we sort of need to get these vision, vision, visioning processes completed really by that point in time? Or are we looking down the road at the community forum, sort of like you said, the three session workshop with the community to gather more feedback from the community? Like, how crunched is my timeline in pulling together the constituents to contribute to that vision? Well, I, I actually look at this, even though the, you're right, the dot is in December. Um, in terms of process, but I envision that having the educational planner on the work at the time the designer executes their contract, et cetera, that, that those sessions would take place in January. So I would say that we have a couple of months here. So the, the school district did secure a consultant that worked on the um, school project, the school proposal, the um, um, the educational profile, thank you. Yeah. Um, and so uh, we're going to continue, and we worked with our faculty yes. uh, the past year and a half mm -hmm. and, and in their team formats to gather, mm -hmm. all, you know, so there's been a lot of data gathering in that regard. And so our, my meeting is with him tomorrow to go into the next steps and roles and responsibilities in order to, the culmination of his consultant contract will be in producing that vision and plan. So should I then paint his timeline to when we get after our community input on those things as well? Uh, that's a great question. Um, you're talking about Jake Foster? I am. Okay. Well, I think what's been done today is, is excellent and 
I wouldn't discourage you from stopping because I yeah. think what happens with the educational plan is going to keep evolving. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. I, I would encourage you to continue to have that meeting and then there, there will be right. um, a, a separate visioning that will take place through the design firm because it's taking, it's taking what you have and taking it a little further, okay, so that it can become the basis of design for, for the building. And, and so um, I wouldn't discourage you from meeting with them. Yeah, we'll, we'll have the meeting. And, and so this group and, and we as our outreach for community participation in our site visits because we want to use that as sort of stimulation around our thinking with an evaluative process to bring back to our team so we can be thinking about education and programming so that when we get to the point of talking about space matching that, we have that in process as well. Along with our profile, the portrait of the graduate Yeah, process. The, the stronger, I mean, the stronger this document is, the better off you are in going into the next step. Um, I so, don't know if your question is whether you think this so what is I, what a what redundant process. So what I mean is I process. don't have a hard deliverable to give you by winter vacation that that process can leak over the first of the year to ensure that we get all of our constituents in the conversations on that. And absolutely, ahead. because what I envision is if we do um, if we do visioning with, with the educational planner, okay, then I would anticipate that you would start um, updating, actually it's on the schedule, you would start updating your edu ed plan um, right after that, so February. Right. And it, and it would give you 60, 70 days to tighten up the direction you're going in. So that means if I can get the portrait of the graduate done by February vacation, that could be included in the plan. So that I have it in my important. schedule, which we're just really meeting for the first mm -hmm. time. I'm just trying to map out a rough schedule that I anticipate between February 1st and um, April 6th, that you would be finalizing that draft of the educational plan and it would be going to the Mass School Building Authority and they would send it to DESC. I'm just going to sit back and relax now. <laughs> <laughs> you okay. opened up my life for me a little bit today. We've been, yep. I've been uh, a little crunched for how we're going to build the plan. Our meeting is going to go very well tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Do you have anything else? Uh, I do have more, Mr. Chair, but I will have okay. others. Uh, anybody else like? Go ahead, Jack. A uh, couple of questions. Quick one. In the first slide, when you talked about credits, um, and is there does the MSBA take into consideration um, that the that the district redid Center School, and I believe it was under the model schools. Do we get any credit points for um, newer schools in our district? Does that work in our favor? No, it's decoupled. Got it. This is a standalone. Thought I would ask. Okay. <laughs> project. <laughs> there were a question. Yes. Coupon. Right. question for you coupon. is if if you have worked out on this building, yeah, and you received money from the Mass School Building Authority, <coughs> let's say you had a new roof done, yeah, then they would mm -hmm. say, mm -hmm. hmm, yeah. by the time we move into the school, the roof is 15 years old and yeah. it should have lasted 20 years. They would. They mm -hmm. would reclaim. So that would have been if we had decided to go with our science lab projects, which the yeah. town voted down. Okay, correct. Yes. Thank you. Excellent. Just thought I would throw that coupon at you. Okay, so with the DSP, the designer selection process, you mentioned that that's a three-member committee. Locally. Locally. Yes. Consisting of the superintendent or his designee, a school building committee member, and a, a person that you refer to as a CEO. Correct. And you mentioned the select person from Bolton. Because town administrator. town administrator from Bolton, why would that be? Where the district, where this building process is a three-town process, why would Bolton get to sit on the committee and not Stowe's town administrator or Lancaster's town administrator? Well, you get to choose three people. Okay. And they reference it as the equivalent of the CEO. Yeah. And because it, it's the school is in Bolton, but 
I don't have any okay. can, preference. Can I, can I just add something? That, I, I realize that's what you were saying. You were basically saying because of the yeah. building. Yeah, no, I realize building. that. But just so you understand, Jen, and I, I don't mean to steal your thunder here, that it's my understanding that between the three CEOs, yeah, between the top three yeah. ministries, they kind of coordinate things Great. together. Great, that's good to know. And if we have Orlando on the committee, and I, I had it in my mind when she mentioned that, that it, ideally it would probably be Orlando, but Orlando might want to talk to you know, Mr. Lowe and the town administrator from Stowe, and they can decide amongst themselves who might be the, the designee. Got it. Thank you. And then well, my last quick question. Orlando's already on this. So Orlando's right. on the committee. Right. It hasn't been in attendance, but he's on the committee. Correct. Um, so my next question is the last question. Thank you for your patience. So I'm interested in understanding just um, when we get to the place somewhere around 2023, and you mentioned September 1st or December 1st, um, voting on the feasibility study. So that is when the, the towns would bring to their town meeting, whether it's a special town meeting, and they would present the results of the feasibility study and we could either vote based on the acceptance of the feasibility study or we could vote in anticipation of that. Correct? Correct, correct. and I don't want to mince words, but I do want to correct the terminology. Okay, that good, that's what I wanted to make sure I was correct. That, see you, yeah. put the slide up. So the feasibility study is from January mm -hmm. 2022 to approximately October 2022. Okay. Um, it's the schematic design that the community votes on. They, they're, they're voting on um, funding the project, where That's you've narrowed it down to one option, yeah. and um, every community is different. You know, if it's a large city, they might mm -hmm. you know, fund it without a debt exclusion vote, such as the city of Boston or Lowell. And, mm -hmm. you know, but I'm, I'm, I'm assuming without having direct knowledge that, that it's going to require a debt exclusion vote mm -hmm. out of the three member communities yes. mm -hmm. based on your um, regional agreement. Yes. So then I that think. vote, the schematic design report is a vote, and I apologize for mixing up the terminology. No, 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 no. The no, schematic no. design then funding the project basically comes in 2023. Yes. Okay. And so it's my understanding that that vote requires a unanimous vote from all three communities to fund the project. Am I correct? I believe I am. I would have to look at your Yeah, but I believe I am correct. You okay. You so that's so unanimous, unlike the school budget which is a two-thirds vote. Okay. This has to be a unanimous vote to fund the project. Okay, thank you. But I'm not a, No, I'm that's, not what a, yeah, that, yeah. that's what it is. Yeah, that's what it is. That's what it is. Acknowledging. Yes. Scary. It is scary. That's where the work comes yeah. in. Yeah. That's where the work comes but, in. But yeah. I think there has to be a, a special town meeting or a special vote by the towns, irregardless of whether it's a debt exclusion, because it does. It has to authorize, they have to authorize the school district to take on the debt. Yes, right. absolutely. Right. Yep. But it does have to be unanimous. That's it does, unanimous. And we've seen, we've seen that before. Yes. We've seen where one town is not voted. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not mentioned the town. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I, I don't know if you know Dr. McQuillan, but um, he would be a great person to speak with about their process because there were 16 communities and then they amended their regional agreement so that it allowed some communities to drop out their really want high sending communities, know, so to yeah. speak. Mm -hmm. And um, and there was one town in that, that group that voted against the project because mm -hmm. they didn't understand, mm -hmm. uh, yes, mm -hmm. because they didn't understand um, the the, uh, the language right. and the uh, regional agreement. And so they did end up going for a second vote mm -hmm. and, and then it passed successfully and, and those half a dozen communities that I think in total were probably less than all combined 30 to 50 students. Right. Okay. Thank you. I remember that. Okay. Go ahead. So uh, just to continue on that and really to what something Bob just said, can it happen at the regular town meeting or are you saying that it has to happen at a special town meeting? It does not have to happen. Uh, Marianne is suggesting it could happen at the annual town right. meeting prior to mm. yep. yeah. August 30th. So that is that that is a potential option for us? That right. is, yeah, that's, that's, that's a possibility. But I'm just wondering if in May, we would have any concept of the cost. This well, coming you're May? You're talking about March. 
Oh, because the because the that's yeah. 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 yeah, you got to know March March 2023. 2023. We would we have any understanding of what they would even be voting on? In March of 2023, yeah, it's nothing this year. Right, but like the schematic design is not due until, say, like June. Right, right. Like right. So June 28th, we're submitting to the Mass School Building Authority, which means I'm notifying them 10 days before that mm -hmm. to certify that we're within your budget. Mm -hmm. And the the five or six weeks, maybe seven weeks before that, we're, we're reconciling two independent cost estimates mm -hmm. so that we have a high level of certainty about this is the cost of the project, and we would have a pretty good idea of uh, order of magnitude. In, in March of uh, 20? No, more like May okay. of um, 2020. So it seems to me like a special election, or excuse I, me, a special I, nominee is in order. I'll be up front. I don't like special elections, but I think right. if you can't really describe the benefits in March, you're better off with a special town right, election. Right. Yeah. And that's what we did in Stowe when we built the center school. Yeah. Yeah. They had to be special town meeting to describe the benefits and everything, aside from the regular budget items. Three special town meetings. Yeah. We'll have to have three. Yeah. Right. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, again, I, I would guess they'd be coordinated. Yes. Coordinated? I would, I would want to see that, yeah. But yeah. that's not for us to decide. Right. So. Right. Is and there any is there any other questions? Go ahead, Mark. Does there have to be a percentage of the voting populace present, present or no. does there have to be no. No. kind of no. Okay. And if your town has a doesn't have a quorum okay. requirement, you can put as few people in there as possible. If they yep. vote in favor of it, that's how it works. Okay. It's a wonderful town meeting government we have. Thank you to the Puritans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are there any other questions? Put it back on. Um obviously you you guys have, I think, what, four? You may not have been anymore, but um, a few regional projects yes. you're working on right now. I, I mean, I can probably surmise what the answer is going to be, but I guess I want to hear you say it, um, which is, you know, as a regional district ourselves, like, what lessons can we take from what your experience has worked in those regions, and frankly, what hasn't worked, um, whether it be these projects or past ones? Well, what I would say is um, I, I think communicating often and frequently, but not over communicating because people don't want to hear the same thing over and over again. But you know, mm -hmm. things to think about is, do, do you have meetings here or do you have meetings in each of the three towns? Um, I know with uh, Lowell as an example, uh, very large city, 3,500 students. Uh, I think we did almost 40 community meetings. Now, not every community is like that. It, it's because of public transportation and going out and having interpreters and you know, 60 different languages spoken at that school. So that was a little bit different situation, but you do what you have to do to make sure that, that you can um, get the message out, that, that people can ask their questions and understand it in, in their own terms. So, you know, uh, I would say just in terms of region, I mean, Minuteman ended up being a four-year feasibility study, mm -hmm. okay? And I, I think it was because it was 16 communities. Mm -hmm. um, and then once we got past that, it just, you know, we were on our way. It was, you know, it was a good project. Um, the school's very happy. But I, but I think with, uh, I think because of the sheer volume of, you had town managers, you had school, school committee and 16 members from 16 different towns and, and um, information maybe not making it back. So for example, if we all, were all in the meeting and then information didn't make, make it back to the members of the community in Stowe or, or in Lancaster, um, people don't like to vote for something blindly. They really need to be educated and, and and we have to demonstrate what the value is and, and and the you know the solution right it's not what I think it's what works best for the community and and so I think it's 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 a it's a long thoughtful process but the engagement makes a difference if, if you're not engaged in, in the process I you know 
I don't know, I can't imagine how we could go very far, but if you could get people excited about mm -hmm. what's mm -hmm. happening in their community and the opportunities for their children and, and programs that are, you know, we're, we're in a world economy now, and so students are competing you know, in a world economy when they graduate. So I hope that answers your question. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have any questions at all? Um, I had a couple of quick questions, then I'll turn it back over to the superintendent. Sure. Um, I, I'll be the first to admit I'm not as ethereal as my fellow committee members, so my questions are really more elementary. Okay. Um, <laughs> first thing, you talked about this design selection uh, committee. It, your date had it as of today, um, but that's not on our agenda tonight. We are missing a couple of members here, especially our uh, town administrator representative. So how quickly would we need to put that design selection team together? Well, you really don't. You really don't need to have that team together until um, the RFS comes in. Okay. You have a couple of weeks okay. to put that team together. Okay. And when I go to drop off packages to the MSBA, they're going to say, "And who are the local?" No. So you have a couple of weeks okay. to to, right. to work that out. Because like I said, a couple of members that are here today, especially our our town administrator sure. representative, I'd like him to be part of that discussion. Absolutely. Uh, Second, I have three questions. The second question has to do with um, what you were talking about with the superintendent. And maybe I'm a little bit confused about visioning. And you were talking about uh, the education plan and, and visioning and some date deadlines in January. Um, is that separate and apart from these public forums that we're going to be having relative to securing input from the community as opposed to what they want to see in the project? It's a different kind of input. Yes, the, the visioning is about getting people together to talk about adjacencies. So if you had a carpentry program and a theater program, you might say, gee, wouldn't it be great if the carpentry and the theater program went together? They're on opposite ends of the building. And, and so it's looking at that. And then you're looking at um, cross-disciplinary training, you know, whether it's training of the teachers or collaboration, um, the, the, those are the things that we look at. Like, how, how could the you know how could the school operate better? How you know? So, it, it's it's visioning, but it's also you, you're talking about a lot of other things, best practices, what's happening in other schools, uh, separate from the community where we're going through a design process and we're reporting to the community. This is where we are. You know, we have six options we're looking at and bringing them along in that conversation as well. I think my question is more from a mechanical standpoint, because looking at some of the other um, uh, websites of other municipal projects throughout the I, I noticed, for example, I, my fellow committee members have heard me say this before, uh, Stoneham, for example. And I noticed that um, in one particular uh, time period in July of maybe last year, I think, uh, two years ago, they had a number of what they call visioning sessions, where they were bringing in people to give their input on this. So my question is really, when you were talking to the superintendent about visioning, you're not talking about doing that in January, are you? Yes. Oh, really? That's soon? Yes. Okay. Because in the visioning process, you can't really start your, your feasibility study until you, you complete your visioning process because you're saying this, this is the direction we're going. And, and so to have those conversations so that it's clear the direction that the design team is going to be moving and moving into in order to support the educational program. Yes, right. that's, so that's actually that's so the first thing that happens in, in a feasibility study is, is so the visioning. Let me just ask this and I'll, I'll just follow up with one very quick question after this. Sure. And I guess I, don't have, I have a hard time understanding that because what you're asking me, you're asking for community input before the feasibility study really gets up to speed and is complete. You're looking for input. Correct. Okay. But as a member of the community, how do I know what it is that we're looking at? I mean, we're looking at a renovation of this building, we're looking at a new construction, we're looking at a different site and a different community. How is a member of the community, how do I come in and, and give you my vision if I don't actually know what the end result of this project is? Good question. You, you don't know that. What okay. we're talking about are the spaces and the practices in the building. And, and we're not talking about the physical building. Okay. It's really more about uh, about the program and whether that happens in you know a new building or this building. It's still the same process. It's identifying the spaces, the adjacencies. You know, 
what do you have not happening in the school that you'd like to see happen now? Sometimes the constraints have to do with the physical space, mm -hmm. and sometimes it has to do with the practices. All right. And my last question is, you mentioned that you were on the DCAM design selection team? Correct. Okay. Can you just tell me, give me sort of an insider's view of this? Because I found, I'm finding the MSBA processes and these review panels and these hearings to be at best perfunctory. There doesn't seem to be a lot, there weren't a lot of questions at the OPM review panel, uh, which surprised me. I thought there would be some significantly more scrutiny of the project, but there wasn't. Is that something that, is there something that goes on behind the scenes? Is there a lot of discussion among the committee members? Because the bona fides and the, and, the, and the qualifications of the OPM review panel were pretty impressive, but they didn't ask a lot of questions. As a matter of fact, only one person asked a question of the process. Mm -hmm. And it surprised me because at you know, most municipal meetings, you're going to see multiple questions. Even on our <laughs> district committee, we ask a lot of questions of uh, our, our people who present. So can you give me a little bit of an insider's background on, on the processes here? Yes, so I would say this particular process that we went through where we scanned stuff our own entity to the Middle School Building Authority. Um, I'm not surprised. I, I don't mean that to sound arrogant or anything. I'm not surprised. They know our work. They're familiar with us. We've done over 20 projects um, with them. Um, you might get to a facilities assessment subcommittee and and we're going to talk about the shape of the building, and, and you're going to find more questions there. With the designer selection, you, you will see questions. People are doing their work in advance of the meetings. They're reviewing the applications. They're making their assessments, and then, and then they're voting. They're not necessarily having a big public dialogue about why they're doing what they're doing, especially since now Bernie's gone, uh, because Bernie talked a lot at all of the meetings. And, um, and I, haven't, I haven't been back since Bernie passed away. But, um, so I don't know uh, how the culture of that board has changed. But you know, if, you, if you read about it, they, they give you 15 minutes as a designer that you know, might be really thoughtful for an hour and a half, give you 15 minutes to present and 15 minutes for questions. And you know, the process they're going to go through is a process I went through for six years, and basically, I'm using DCAM's process where I'm putting together a matrix, and any application in and of itself, you know, might look great, but when you look at it across a matrix, then then it pops. It's like, oh, here's the here's the points of differentiation. Here's the distinction. Oh, the firm did this, but that team didn't do that work, and so. So we, we have the opportunity to be very, very thorough and, and for the three members to, um, to speak up. And you, could, you can even have six members, but only three at the table. If you wanted, for example, to in, in include the CEO from three times and one other you know, SBC member, or, or your principal, but you have three voting members. But I think the opportunity there is to really, um, as, as a group, these are new distinctions in terms of evaluating these, these firms. And, and so um, I, I say new distinctions because most people haven't been through this process before. And, and the MSBA has been through it a lot. And, and they know by looking at the applications and the body of work, and they see uh, references, right? We, we would have we would have meetings with DCAM, and I would see references, and I, you know, sometimes you'd say, oh my God, I wonder if they know this. <laughs> this is the feedback that they got on that firm, and and so um, even though it's public, not all things are public, so to speak, unless somebody makes a public information request. So, um, you know, I I think that when you get into the feasibility study, when you get beyond forming the project team, you'll see a lot of engagement. You may even say, geez, I wish they weren't so engaged here, because it, it is a thoughtful process that they have. And um, this is one of many projects. You know, they might have 25 core projects at a time going, but they have a couple hundred projects going between the repair projects, and you know, they only have so many resources. And Thank you. Uh, so 
the first four questions I have here are sort of all related to design. So why don't I save those for when we get to design conversations in the interest of time. Um, but I would like to get some insights from you on building projects that have been completed and are open and functioning that are really focused in on 21st century competencies and, and project-based learning, flipped learning, um, you know, personalized learning type of models where there's a lot of voice and choice happening from students and a lot of, of uh, collaboration and interplay between disciplines. So, you know, those, those forward-thinking um, um, educational models where, where kids are learning the standards, but they're also gaining the experiences they need so that they develop these competencies to go on to college and career. I, I, so if you have some key sites we can visit, I sure would like to hear those while we're in sort of this I visit will, phase. I will speak to my colleagues, but right off the top of my head. That's what I'm, that's Minuteman, all I'm asking. Minuteman right off the bat, because mm -hmm. Minuteman teaches entrepreneurship. Yeah. They, they have their uh, career and technical programs. They have robotics. Um, in reading your educational plan at the stage that it's at now, it made me think of Minuteman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So good news, Don Lowe got back to us today for our visit to Minuteman. It appears to be scheduled in the books, I think. I should learn about it tomorrow. Okay. Uh, so Minuteman was at the top of our list. I came from the Natick system. We've been through two projects. There's some things to see there. There's also a half a dozen other schools on our list, but we don't know what we don't know. So any guidance you can give on those? Absolutely. Topics. All right, does anybody have any questions? Go ahead. Uh, do we get the approval letter? I assume yes. that is yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Can you talk more about the visioning part role that I would play in yeah, that's going to be one of the outcomes of my meeting tomorrow. Okay. Um, I think that's it. I want to thank Ms. Williams for thank every time. You. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. It was very helpful. Yeah. I'm sorry I couldn't take my mask off. No. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, we have a policy. So are we. We're used to it. We're used to it. Yeah. But it was very helpful. The, the slides, the presentation, the color chart, and the answers to the questions. So thank you very much. Yeah, and could you get that, could you get that slide presentation to uh, Ms. Marone? Yes. Thank you very much. Yes. So we'll do that. I, and I guess the only question I would have is in reading the, um, the letter from the MSBA from Mary Piketty that she was looking for uh, an executed copy of the OPM contract. Yes, that's on our agenda for this evening for a recommendation to the district committee, which will be meeting tomorrow night. Okay, October 1st. And then the other thing, you have two documents yeah. um, so that we can file our reports with the MSBA that you go to the uh, superintendent. Yes. Yeah. So, so this just allows us to to do input in the monthly reports and then also with the co -pay. Yeah. And then I'm, I'm, I'm assuming, Pat, I could call you tomorrow when we could figure out, mm -hmm. you know, clean up the RFS and determine sure. when we could send that to the MSBA. And, you know, the schedule, the information was a lot of information. I was hesitant to bring so much information up front, uh, but you know, I will be tweaking the timeline once once we have definite answers on where we are. With okay. Okay. We think that I should execute this once I have approval from the school committee to execute the contract as well, or do you need the contract? This this just gives us access to the you know, shoulder um, site. Or, uh, right. Yeah. I mean we have. We have it for all the different yeah. sites, but. Okay. okay. And then I put down where I can do the input so that if you need help with Topay and all that, right. I can just, just okay. instead of just looking at it. So. Even do a training together, which I would recommend. Okay. Um, because they, they actually have really mm -hmm. good trainings, and then that way, if you have questions, you have a contact there that you're familiar with. That, okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. All right. Next on the agenda is the um, vote on recommendation to the district committee to authorize Superintendent Downing mm -hmm. to execute the service agreement with Skanska. Now, before we get to that, we have a, a parliamentary issue which we have to address. Um, Jen, I need you to note the time at this point. And at this point, um, I'm going to let Ms. Uh, Cohen speak to a potential issue here. Yeah, so 
um, excuse me, where do I note the time? Note under the, under the agenda item B? Yeah, you're going to note the time it is right now, which she's, because what's going to happen right here is, is that, and I'm going to steal a little bit of Amy's thunder, Amy may have a conflict of interest in regards to uh, the selection of OPM, our uh, selection of scans because our OPM. Okay, okay. I know the so, time is 7.36. Okay, so what, the reason I want that is in the, the minutes is because Amy has to leave the room while we have this discussion. And the reason she has to leave the room is because She's been advised by legal counsel to recuse herself, not to abstain from the vote, to recuse herself. And that means she has to leave the room if she cannot count towards a quorum. Now, we, we don't have an issue with a quorum tonight, but irrespective of that, um, she's going to be required to vacate this meeting, and it should be noted in minutes the time that she leaves, and then note no the time that she comes back once we're done with this meeting. So, okay. Anything further to add? Okay. No. Yeah, just hang out. We'll come back and get you when this uh, discussion is over. Thank you, Amy. All right. Um, so, in regards to the contract, Pat, do you have anything to add to this? Um, did you deal with Peter in, in the um, uh, negotiation of that contract? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, we went over it extensively and. Um, there wasn't anything that needed to be changed. It's a standard contract right. that MSBA gives to us. Basically, um, we just fill in our information, and um, it's been reviewed by him, and he said everything looks good. Is there anything particularly you'd like to put in to know about this, or anything special, anything that you um, uh, Anything that you'd like to highlight? Um, I think that... Um, on the spot here, I probably um, and I look at a number of contracts every day. Um, I, I think that um, a lot of the um, the language in the contract, I think, is um, standard and um, you know in, in accordance with um, uh, procurement. You know, Massachusetts procurement. Um, and um, I wish I had had some time to go over this to um, go highlight anything in, in that I found was really um, memorable. Um, if you could maybe let me look at it a little bit more and bring it up at another time, I'd prefer to do that All at right. this point. Okay, so we need, but we still need to yeah. uh, make a recommendation this evening to the district committee. So. Um, I understand it's an extensive document, and I thought of putting you on the spot here. Um, okay, so I will entertain. If anybody has, there any questions that have gotten the contract at all? I do. Oh, okay. uh, what's the plan for an attachment A of the payment schedule? The not to exceed fee and the completion date for all the phases except the first one. Does that mean that that there'll be some future negotiation? And How does that work? Could you repeat your question? Sure. I, I mean, maybe I'm misreading it. The attachment A, the project phases item to work, is not to exceed fee and completion date for the feasibility and schematic design phase. And then there's other phases, which is, I think are blank. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Does, that, does that mean that those dollar amounts in those phases will be subject to negotiation at a later date? We have yes. only been authorized by the MSBA to do the feasibility, so right. we can't negotiate any fees beyond that. Right. Yeah, this is just the first phase. Okay. All right. No, I was did, just did that come out in the email? Did I miss that? This document did come out. Well, it's in part of the meeting material. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So I, I downloaded yeah. it and I didn't print it out. Yeah. All right. Well, you. it's <laughs> killing a lot of trees. It's uh, 25 pages. And, uh, yeah. All right. I did think of one thing that I just want you to know that I did negotiate this contract to be lower than what was initially um, brought forward. Um, I went back and forth. Peter and I talked about different things where where we could see adjustments, and um, this is a little bit lower. Not a lot, but we had to make some decisions as to where we wanted to make changes um, and where we felt that um, changes in, um, if you look at, like the hourly rates and things of the, like Dale Caldwell, we negotiated his rate down. And um, and the number of hours that he estimated in this contract that he would be using, it were, he kind of dialed that back a little bit because he didn't feel that he would actually be 
you know, participating as much as he was estimating in this contract. Okay. So for those of you who don't know, Mr. Colwell is the, um, I guess they call him the account manager. Yes. And I think he's actually on, he's on the, the senior yeah, manager. Yeah, on the flow chart, he's right above Ms. Williams. Yes. And he was the one that presented uh, as long as Ms. Williams at the interview. So, I'm sorry. Mr. Chair, yeah. it's just really the only leverage that we had at that point was looking at the minimum and comps, and so we were able to look at the minimum and comps to, to get those from the right. Are there any further questions? Ms. Vibrito. I wonder if, so what I'm noticing is that the OPM fee is nearly close to a third of our money. Mm -hmm. And so is that typical? I, because that it seems to me that if we're going to need, if we're only going to have a million dollars for the architect, is that really compensative? I, I spoke to her about that um, because when we were negotiating the fee, I said I didn't want to be in a position where I had to go back to the town and ask for mm -hmm. more money. Mm -hmm. And she assured me that she thought that the schematic design phase would come in a lot lower, probably less than a million dollars anyway. So we, we're right in, in line with um, where we should be as far as what we have authorized by the town. Like the fox is guarding the hen house a little there, but um, yeah, well, but we have to our, trust. I right? think there's some information on the MSBA website that tells us. Did we see some charts, Ken, that said how much the OPM was compared to the whole feasibility study and the percentage and stuff like that? So we can we can go back and look at that. But I, I, you know, we can we can find out some comparable things if you if you want me to go report out to the committee next meeting. I'll, I'll see what I can find. Um, um, I don't I don't necessarily want to gum up the, the process here, and I know that we're on a timeline, and we need to vote to authorize tonight, and vote tomorrow night is the next meeting. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to put that out there and say we don't want to go back to the towns for more money. We were kind of given a cap by the towns. Mm -hmm. Right. That 1.5 was as much as they would support. So. And I made that very clear that that's the way it was in the town and in, in the all three towns that we wouldn't go over that amount. Mm -hmm. And um, she assured me that it would be somewhere between seven and nine hundred and something thousand. For the and it feels like the RFS actually had that range in it as well yes. for the designer, yes. the design team. Um, and the design team contains all of the consultants. And I mean, it all comes out of that. Yes. And so if, if the OPM is 423, Saying. Right. And the, let's say that the design team is a million, um, is $75,000 enough to cover kind of any other costs? Are there any other costs? 75000 Yeah. Right around there? Let's, let's so, see. So. One million plus yeah. 4 point twenty-three. Let, I would, I would say so at that point. Okay. So we're feeling confident that we have the money we need. <laughs> at this point, yes. I would say so. It's in her best interest to advise me. I mean, if it doesn't, then every, the whole thing will collapse. Mm -hmm. So it's in her best interest for this to stay under that number. Okay. Yes. Thank All you. set? All right. Anybody else? Well, you know, that, that goes back to her point, not that we have to decide it, <coughs> that we advertise fee. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. We advertise. That's right. All right. All right. I'll make a motion okay, go to ahead. authorize Superintendent Downing to execute a services agreement slash contract with Scancy USA for the retention of the owner's project manager services attendant to the Neshoba Regional High School building project. Do I have a second? Second. second. Mr. Sikansky seconded that. Uh, is there any further discussion on the matter? No, no? Okay, I'll call the roll. Mr. Sikansky? Aye. Ms. Vivrito? Aye. Mr. Hartnell? Aye. Mr. Fromer? Aye. Uh, Ms. Early? Yes. Ms. Dittrebaum? Yes. Ms. Cosentino? Aye. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Ms. Dupuy? Aye. And myself? Yes. So, Great. All right. Okay. okay. All right. Note the time. Okay. I'm going to get Ms. Cohen back in here. Okay. Oh, yeah, if you wouldn't mind, yeah. Okay. 745. I'll wait for Amy to come back. What?
I didn't. I didn't have a lot of chance to talk to her. But she basically told me that um, she had contacted our legal counsel. And she had uh, done some work for the scans in the past. So it, it may be. It may be an ongoing thing. I'll just check with her. Perhaps when we negotiate their next round Mm -hmm. All okay, right, she's back. <laughs> All right. Thank, thank you, Amy. All right. Yeah. So the next matter on the agenda is uh, another vote to uh, for recommendations to the committee regarding the um, request for services, and that would be for Ms. Maroney to uh, issue the uh, request for services for designer services. I'll make a motion to authorize. Ms. Maroney to submit for approval to the Massachusetts School Building Authority a request for services for design services. Thank you. Can I second? Second. Ms. Verrito seconded. Okay. Is there any discussion on this? Go ahead, Leah. So the document isn't exactly final, right? So No, not right now. Actually, um, it is what they call a red line document, and we made changes to customize it to our district, and it will be submitted. Um, to MSBA, and they'll make any changes, um, and um, Skanska helped with this already. So, and so um, just your phone wait. number's wrong in it. So, I have, I have a question. Wait, hold on. Are, are you done? Okay. Well, I just wanted to make sure that I understand what to tell the committee tomorrow night. So, in authorizing Pat to submit this RFS to MSBA, we will no longer have any further oversight over the proposal, right? Like it's now out of the committee's hand and we are dependent upon the OPM and Pat to finalize language if need be? Correct. Mm -hmm. Good. My question is regarding whether we should, when we, if we choose to advertise a fee for the designer, when is that, does that need to be incorporated into a request for services? Okay, she, she didn't, say, she didn't that. say that. No, she well, didn't recommend it, but she said we could consider it. It's but it comes at a later date, I think. Yeah. But I think right. that it's in the RFS right now. The range is in that document. It says like between seven hundred thousand and a million fifty. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I admit I have not. I did not look. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Well, well, it also like mentions the, the, the possible construction, the range of construction mm -hmm. costs. Not project costs, but construction costs. So, you know, if you think about it as a percentage of that, that's where the okay. 700 million comes from. Are there any further questions? Go ahead, Leah. So it seems to me that we should probably discuss if we're okay with putting that fee range in there at this point, because Pat is gonna have to either take it out or leave it in. I think the fee range is appropriate. I don't see. Mm -hmm. I don't see any reason to change the fee rate, the fee range at this point in time. Not change it, but eliminate it, because she was saying that it's, she, she, I think she recommended we put it in there. She did, she mm -hmm. recommended that, mm -hmm. she did. Yeah, so I I would go with what she recommends, given their yeah. lengthy okay, experience. Hiring. That's why we're hiring them. Wait, 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 it being in there. Um, it seemed to me that she recommended it, but she also said that we didn't have to provide it. And so as long as the committee is okay with that. Yeah, I'm, we're, we're <laughs> I'm looking for the same thing. What page? No, page is on that. Should be included in the RFS. 
The template doesn't have it. Yeah, I, the template doesn't have it. Mm -hmm. This is a straight out template. Um, so I would not add, if, if, if you want to add it, you've got to flag it as a special thing you're adding to, for the MSBA to review. And then they're going to question us about why we're doing mm -hmm. it. And we don't have a good answer. <laughs> No. Well, no, I, I think I think she was talking about a separate a issuing a separate document or some kind of announcement. At a later date, mm -hmm. advertising. I didn't okay. get the impression that that it was that it was part of the RFS. And my impression was that it was going to be advertised at a later date. Or some kind of announcement. With an announcement she said you could even advertise it, meaning okay. yeah, put it out for bid. Well, let me say. I don't know about you, Amy, but I had the same impression you did. I didn't get that uh, impression that it was going to be advertised at a later date. I would think it would be part of the RFS so that they know what they're bidding on and what the, what the fee is going to be. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Go ahead, turning up. Um, I mean, conceptually, um, prospective bidders can ask questions. I mean, we can say, we can either, uh, it may not be a template that's saying that you, know, you want to know the fee, you can ask, mm -hmm. or if a question is asked, do you know the fee, we can simply answer the question then. Theoretically. Let me put forth that for the OPM RFS, there was no so fee listed. Different, though. Why? Because you can't request, um, you can't like fix the fee for that. You have to select it first. That's the same here. Well, it's a, it's a different kind of procurement. No, oh, okay. Okay. It's a okay. different process. But in any program. event, we, we, we got to an agreement without announcing it in the request for services. Right. Um, I, I do have another question about this one. Go ahead. We're done with this topic. Right. Well, just on like that, that, that made me uneasy when we were doing the selection of the OPM, never having them have an idea or us even have an idea of what their potential contract cost was. So, I think it should be in this RFS so they know, so we're getting the right people mm -hmm. to the table and not people who are going to be over that budget and just waste a lot of, a lot of everybody's energy. Um, so I, 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 I agree. feel strongly it should be part of the I RFS. Think Mary Ann's, I think Mary Ann wants to accomplish that, but she doesn't want to put it in the RFS, which is why she said it should be advertised separately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's, but Again, it's not part of the template. It, but it, it, it's not really the OPM's decision in this regard. This is our decision. And I thought, I agree with Ms. Cohen, I thought that the, the representation was put out your fee so that the people who are bidding on this know exactly what the fee is going to be, so that you don't run into what Mr. Froman just said, some uncertainties in regards to what you're going to be paying. Okay, but we don't know how to set the fee properly. We don't. Uh, don't, we, uh, don't we have a cap on what the towns have approved to fund for a feasibility study? Yeah. And didn't we just mm -hmm. approve a budget for an OPM? We so did. don't we know how much we have left? Yes. Uh, uh, that's, my, I mean, that's my very elementary understanding of and it. And just like in this process, when we negotiated the fee, if this fee came in over 600000 I would be very uneasy with, with anybody who had proposed that fee without negotiating it down. And if they wouldn't come down to where this number was, I, I probably would have gone to the next person down because it, it was too close. Mm -hmm. We would have had to do that. But, yeah. but it, it was a possibility, and we had discussed that, that if somebody came in too high, then we would just have to go down to the next person. I would just ask that we, um, in this authorization and in this motion, we do it with the understanding that it is going to either be included or not be included in the RFS. Whichever it is, it's fine, but. All right. Um, does anyone have any questions? Because I, I have a question. So um, my question is, and it follows off of uh, Ms. Marito, the, the, the RFS that was sent to us is a red line version of this. Mm -hmm. But then explain to me why I, on a red line version, that we're going to recommend appro approval of this RFS to the district committee. I mean, if, if I were not part of this committee, and this was presented to me tonight, I said, this is a red line version. This isn't a fine line version. Why, why, are we, why, are we just, why am I approving a red line version? Well, 
because all we're doing is proving this is Pat message. Maroney mm -hmm. issuing it. Right, right. We're just the we're motion getting, to we're getting authorize. Her, we're giving her the authorization to yeah. finalize the RFS. That's the motion. That's what was in the agenda. Right. Um. This is how the format that MSBA requires that we submit in with the red line. But we submit it to them. They make changes. They might say, no, you can't do this, no, you can't do that, uh, you know, based on our particular project. Okay. And that's what we're waiting for. There isn't a final yet. This is just for submission. Mm -hmm. Okay. So at some point in time, if that's what we want to do, if we want to, we can find that out tomorrow. But this is just my initial submission. They. So that's not going anywhere. Like that's, that's not, not going, going to be anywhere. public or anything. No, until not, yeah. so we would have another opportunity to come back and say mm -hmm. we could put it in or not put it in. Is that correct? Yes, I know. I would think so. Mm -hmm. I, I can't imagine Maybe. why you wouldn't be able to. So we have. Well, it, it, just for, for from. Again, mechanical standpoint, I mean, I'm looking at this document, and when, you, when it was sent to me in red line, I was a little bit surprised. I thought this was an unfinished and incomplete document, and I was curious as to why we would be making a recommendation to the district committee to um, submit an unfinished and in-process document. So what you're telling me is basically that, that these are our suggested changes. These are going to go to the MSBA. The MSBA is going to finalize right. the, the, the actual RFS to be submitted. Right. The and this is just getting your blessing. It's okay to move this process along. Almost, almost everything you see in red in this document is copied out of the OPM RFS. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can't find anything that's truly new in here. The bullet points are the same. The summary of the description of the school. The goals are exactly the same as they are in the right. RFS. It's not a brand new which, is, which a lot of it has already been edited by MSBA. Right. And, and, reviewed, and reviewed by this committee and the school committee. We, we've reviewed this, we haven't reviewed this document. I think mean, you mean your PM. No, you, if you, but, you, but where the background is, that's a cut and paste from the OPM RFS. All right, so is there any further discussion on the matter? Seeing none, uh, would anyone like to make a motion? We already made a motion. Oh, you're in, sorry. And seconded oh. by Ms. Viverito. Viverito, okay. Do, Go ahead, Ann. Do we need to make an amendment to resolve this discussion about the designer? Nope, fee? I don't think so. Wait a minute, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. It, 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 Amy, if, you're, I, if you want to make an amendment, that's certainly your prerogative. <laughs> So if the motion goes through as now, there is no designer fee in the So if you vote no against, uh, I prefer to have the, the designer fee in the RFS. So um, I'd like to make an amendment that we include it. Okay, you need to make a motion. Uh, I move to include the designer fee in the RFS before we submit it to the RFS. Is there a second on the motion? Second. Okay, Mr. Fromertank, is there any discussion on this amendment? Yes, there's no guidance as to how much that should be. How about, uh, is, but, but Pat, isn't there, we have a, a number for that, right? All the Not to exceed money? would be the balance of the money that would be going, the balance of the 423 or whatever thousand dollars. And that, that contract that we, that you just approved, is an estimate. If they came upon something unforeseen, it could be more expensive. I just want you to just keep that in mind. Or it could be less, which would give more money to put towards a designer. Uh, I just, we don't have to spend all the money. So, I mean, if you put the lowest amount out there, you might not get any, any um, designers to come forward. I would just leave, like to leave it open. As a range, as a, as a range. Yes. Yeah. 
Can I ask for a clarification on that point? So is is the motion, just to clarify the motion, is the motion to have a range or is the motion to have a cap? Because there's a difference. The motion was amended to include the designer fee in the RFS submission to MSBA was made by Ms. Cohen. That's what the motion was. Right. But, right. Yeah, I don't think it was determined whether there's going to be a range or it's going to be a cap. Nope. Okay. It just said designer fee. Yeah. So that's a good point. Should we look at a range or should we look at a cap or should we not look at all? Okay. Sure. I, I, I don't think we know enough. I, I, Which we, we'd be out, I think we'd be outsmarting ourselves mm -hmm. to put that in this document at this stage. I agree. Remember, with that. it's not going out to bid yet. We have an opportunity to meet with Mary Ann again in the next few weeks, ask her this specific question, and if we want to go back and make that specific change to the document, we can go to MSBA and do that. Are we sure? Are we sure of that? That's my only question. Yeah. We can definitely yeah. go back, back to the. That's fine. We can go back to MSBA and before say... Before the RFS goes out? Hmm? Before it goes out? Yes. Okay. I would say that Marianne's standing in the hallway. Why don't we ask her? She's she our did. consultant. Is she in the hall? I don't know. She's I'm still here. don't know why she's still here. I don't think we she's have a meeting after. after. Yeah, but we have to. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, all right. right. Yeah, yeah, let's... Two, two, two four people. Oh, I know. Oh, as much as it's wonderful as they are. Right? They're here, they're getting paid. Mm -hmm. I think she has, I didn't she has intelligence that we could ask. I didn't realize she was still here. Like, she, she is. is. Yeah. 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 We haven't posted 8 o'clock. I forgot, yeah. I forgot, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I knew because I knew I'm going to be at that meeting. Also, I knew them, but I just forgot that she was supposed to be here also. Mm -hmm. We still still live in public meetings. <laughs> we love it. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we are an encore. Okay. We have a, an issue that's come up in regards to the request for services. Okay. And based upon what you had represented in your presentation, um, it's the opinion of at least some members of this committee that it might be beneficial and prudent for the district to include a fee for design services in the request for services. But oh. there are others on the committee who feel otherwise. So okay. it's been suggested that maybe you could give us some insight into this particular issue. Yes. Um, at the risk of repeating myself, the, the, the issue of having uh, an unsuccessful negotiation at the beginning um, and tying up the process Three, three to four weeks if they have up to 31, 30 days to negotiate the contract. I think in advertising the fee, um, I, because I'm in these conversations about fee on projects, um, that camera's still on? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. Um, that, that I think it would be, um, if you look at the amount of, the level of effort that in, in my mind there's a reasonable number. I don't know if you're asking me for that number or not. I, I think what we're asking is for some guidance on, because I think there's some division of opinion on this, uh, guidance as to whether or not you would recommend we include a fee for services or we leave that open and subject to negotiation. Uh, I would recommend that you include it. Okay. Um, in, in the interest of, of time that that to keep the process moving. Okay. Um. Ms. Verito. So um, is it at this stage when we're submitting the red line document to the MSDA that that range should be placed in there? Or should we wait and do it at a later stage? The, the, I think we can talk to them. I, I would put it in there. Um, I think if you put a range, somebody's, it's human nature, it's going to go to the, go to the, top, the yeah. top of the range. But I think what, what you'll do is that you will, a, a fair number, because they know the level of effort that's required, um, a, a fair number will, you know, attract the people you, you know, you would want to attract to the project. and. Um, 
and, and if the number is too low or you go into negotiations and the number is too low, um, you know, that can be, that can be an issue. Good so the part of the discussion is whether we should approach this as, you know, the communities have approved a certain amount of funding for the feasibility study. We've just approved a certain amount for an OPM contract, so um, would it be advisable to include and not to exceed fee for a designer based on the difference in those two? Um, will you want to carry, you have four lines in your feasibility. Um, you have the OPM, you have the um, geo environmental, geotechnical, and then you have the other category. Okay. You want to say reserve some money for that. Uh, those two categories, if you're looking at multiple sites, uh, as an example, and, and you, you know, if you do a phase one, environmental and you discover something and you need to do a phase two that would be additional services to the designer's contract so you would want to have that money available without having to to go back I, I, I don't think you can lose I, I don't I don't want to hang it up on I don't think you could lose either to, either decision you okay. make I just think that um, I just think that you just have to be aware that that you might not be able to negotiate with the, your, your first choice. If you if you advertise a fee and somebody pursues the project, you're you're moving into executing the contract and asking them for the work plan. When you say advertise a fee, in, in the request for service, as part of the request for service, yes, you'll okay. you'll see in there that it actually states if if it's if the fees could be negotiated or, or advertised. Okay. Um, can we continue with this process of submitting the red line version until we can, and then go back to the MSBA and say we'd like to put this fee in there? Because I don't, I don't feel we can do a good job of coming up with the fee tonight. I, I think that's very prudent. You submit the red line draft. Um, once they do they make their review comments, uh, all they ask is if you make any more edits to send the final version to them. Okay. And do, do we know the timeline on that? When that, they, what, what is that period? That they would like to take up to 10 business days to review the red line draft. That's why, you know, yeah. longer it goes, you, you may miss a board meeting and then you're out to the next two board meetings. Um, so I don't think it's an issue. I've, um, I've got a call into the project manager there to ask her um, how soon she thinks she can turn something around in her review. Good, Bob. I think we were shooting for putting this in the register on October 13th. Is that correct? No, no, no. I don't think so. No. Well, maybe you are correct. <laughs> you have my schedule, but I don't have my glasses on. Um, Is it on here? Uh, no. It's okay, it's on, it's on some other document. It's on the What's that? Um, on a list of dates. I'm sorry, I packed things up. No, 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 but I want to answer your question. No, we're looking at, um, let's see. Yeah. Let's see. The ads appearing on yes, the 13th to appear. So we've got to submit it four or five days before the 13th of October. We're under You want to, yeah, so, I'm sorry. Okay. So if you submit it to the MSBA no later than the 28th, then it, then the ad would appear on the 13th, so I stand corrected, and um, the RFP would be available on the 13th. So okay. we, we don't have to wait for them to come back. We can, while they're doing their initial review, we could meet 
and we could meet next week and, and with your guidance say, okay, here's what the range should be. We could vote on that. And as they're reviewing it, we can add to what we've already submitted. So we don't have to wait sequentially. Right, so we can set a meeting tonight to meet next week to vote on that number Correct. and just add it to that. And then, then we're not really losing a step or losing a lot of time. Right, because okay. I, ideally even, even this draft, and, and we need to correct a couple of dates because I know it's time. You know, we had at a certain point put this put this together, and now that we know where we are, we'll correct a couple of dates. And I know Pat, you and I have to figure out, you know, can we do a tour of the school and at what time or what day? You know, so there's a couple of little things that we yeah. do we we have to amend um, before we send it to the MSBA. But there's no reason why I think with a conference call between the three of us, we couldn't just clean it up and then let the MSBA do their review and let that clock start ticking with the MSBA. Right. And in the meantime, you guys can work with Pat to come up with a, a range so you can educate us on what yes. we should present as a range yes. that we could vote on. Yes. That, that to me makes sense. Mm -hmm. I think it should, the number should be in there, but I agree that we need to know what that number it is. Mm -hmm. Does uh, anybody else have any questions for Ms. Williams? Okay, seeing none, we have a motion to amend the original motion on the floor. Uh, Jen, do you have the actual wording? The motion? motion was amended to include the designer fee in the RFS submission to MSBA. Okay. Seconded by Mr. Fromer. All right. Is there any further discussion on the motion, on the motion to amend? We're just voting on the amendment right now. I, I, would, um, I would just point out that I'm, I'm, I'm now fine with putting the amount in um, the RFS before it's published, but I don't know that we need to get it in to the one. Understood. To the end of the Understood. Right. Yeah. Okay. Correct. Right. Okay. Correct. All right. I don't All know right. if you want to amend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. You want to include that? Uh, okay. So. Does anybody amend the amendment? Amendment. Do I have to do it? Can we just change your wording? Wait, 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 wait. wait. So procedurally, we'll do it this way. So, um, Ms. Cohen, would you consent to a friendly amendment to your motion to amend to include the language that Mr. Sikansky mm -hmm. just stated? And Bob, why don't you just once again? <laughs> okay, that we will include. Uh, we will we will not include it in the uh, submission to the MSBA, but we will include it to the published version. Mm -hmm. okay. So, motion was amended to include the designer fee in the published, published version. Published version. Mm -hmm. Version of the RFS submission to MSBA. Mm -hmm. Motion was no, amended. No, not, no, take out to the MSBA. Okay. Motion was amended to include the designer fee in the published version of the RFS submission. Mm -hmm. Correct. Perfect. All right. Is that acceptable to you, Ms. Cohen? It is. Uh, who seconded that motion? Is that acceptable? Yes. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, I will call the roll. Attorney Hartnick. Aye. Mr. Fromer. Yes. Ms. Cohen. Yes. Ms. Early. Yes. Ms. Dutramont. Yes. Ms. Cosentino. Yes. Ms. Bailey. Yes. Ms. Dupuy. Yes. Ms. Viverito. Yes. Mr. Sikansky. Yes. Police yes, right. it's unanimous. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I have to unmute. Okay. Yeah. I think you're okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, I know. I didn't have to unmute with my typing problems. You're, you're yeah. clairvoyant to stick around. Thank you very much. Yes. So we have we have to we now have to vote on the original motion now to authorize Pat to submit the argument. Yes. So now. Yes. 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 I think we need to finish this item of business, but the CEO committee has a meeting scheduled after this one. Oh, all right. So, we, yeah, this is the last issue of business, so we're going to take the vote on the uh, authorization for Pat. Okay. okay, motion to authorize Ms. Maroney to submit for approval to the Massachusetts School Building Authority a request for services for design services. Uh, approved. Uh, motion to authorize was me, Ms. Dontremont. Yeah, okay. Motion was seconded by Ms. Vivarito. That, that, that motion that 
Who, I'm sorry, who made the motion? Who made, who, who, who I did. You did, okay. Your motion is now amended to include the language that Ms. Cohen has requested. Correct. Okay. All right. Motion was amended. I put that below. Okay. But we still haven't voted right. on the That's original correct. motion. Okay. So now we have to vote on the original motion. Is there any further discussion on that original motion? Seeing none, I will call the roll again. Mr. Sikansky? Yes. Ms. Verrito? Yes. Ms. Dupuy? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Ms. Cosentino? Yes. Ms. Dutcheron? Yes. Ms. Early? Yes. Ms. Cohen? Yes. Mr. Farmer? Yes. Attorney Hartnagel? Aye. Myself? Yes. Okay. okay. Unfinished business? We none. We have none. Uh, so we're going to want to set a date, probably fairly certain, soon for uh, the next meeting. If, if for no other reason but to establish that uh, fee for inclusion in the RFS, hopefully it will be a short meeting. Maybe Is it wide. possible for it to be remote? I, I was, it will be unquestionably remote. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I will I will endeavor to make this a one agenda. Ooh, um, Ooh that's going to be awesome. Because I don't, honestly, I mean, it's the first time we've all been together. I really am fearful of meeting fatigue. So I, I want to try and keep these meetings quick, short, and to the point. All right. Um, anybody have any suggestions for a date? Go ahead, Ms. Cohen. Uh, Ms. Uh, it's okay. Um, so I say maybe next Wednesday, the 29th at 6. I have my community meeting in Stone that week. Yeah, at 7. At 7. So can we do a virtual one and item I, meeting? I am not a voting right. member of that, so. Uh -huh. I, I could do six thirty minutes. Uh -huh. Yeah, no. Okay. The 30th is open house, right? The 30th is open house here. Yeah. That does not work for me, but. 28th? Tuesday? One week from today? I'm a definite no for that, but I know, I know that Chair Gleason can take some good minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, I'll take the minutes. Okay. I can't be okay. So, um, Tuesday. 9.28. 9.28, what time? 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 6.30? What's your, what's the? Maybe 7. 7, seven o'clock? 7, All right. I'll tell Lita. All right, can I have a motion to that effect? So, um, someone want to move for the next uh, hearing day? I think it's hearing hearing date, next meeting day. I will make a motion. Thank you, Ms. Zivrita. That our next meeting will be next Tuesday, September 28th at 7 p.m. virtual. Okay, and a second? Second. second. Mr. Hartnagel. All right. Any discussion? Seeing none, I will call the roll. Ms. Vibrito? Yes. Ms. Dupuy? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Ms. Cosentino? Yes. Ms. Stuntermont? Yes. Ms. Early? Yes. Ms. Cohen? Yes. Mr. Fromer? Yes. Attorney Hartnagel? Aye. Ms. Kansky? Yes. Myself? Yes. It's All right. Don't uh, okay. back up yet, folks. Yeah. we got to make a motion to adjourn. Yeah. And when the, the, and the, and the I'm item, making the a item, motion to adjourn. The item to be considered for the next agenda will be a one item okay. agenda. Yes. So we'll leave it at that, and um, I make oh, a motion. Wait, wait, hold on. Okay. And we're going to we'll approve the minutes of this meeting next, and the two other meetings as mm -hmm. well. So those will be two quick items on the agenda. Okay. All right. All right. Any um, so, Chair Gleason, any any things that I need to correct on my minutes of the 14th? You'll let me know then. Yeah. Okay. Because you took the ones in June. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Motion to adjourn at. 8 19 p.m. Are you making that motion? I am. Okay. <laughs> Ms. Cohen seconded. It's not up for discussion, so. <laughs> Thankfully. Ms. All right, Ms. motion Ms. was approved. Mr. Sikansky. Aye. Ms. Verrito. Yes. Ms. Dupuy. Yes. Ms. Bailey. Yes. Ms. Cosentino. Yes. Ms. Dr. Mont. Yes. Ms. Early. Yes. Ms. Cohen. Yes. Mr. Fromer. Yes. Attorney Hartnagel. Aye. Perfection. Thanks, Thank you, everyone.